Alright, so uh, this is a Moore circle problem. Chapter 7 is all Moore circle. And uh, they give you this 2D state of stress. They give you uh, sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. And they ask you to find uh, the principal stresses and the maximum shear stress, and also the principal planes of the shear plane. Okay? Alright, so we're going to have to draw a uh, Moore circle and determine it by like, just algebra and trig. Okay? So, um, alright, so what do we have? What's sigma x in this? Uh, 2D state of stress. Negative sigma 60. x is negative, yeah. 60 MPA. What about sigma y? Negative 40 MPA. Negative 40 MPA. And what about tau xy? Positive 35. Yep, 35 MPA. Okay, alright, so that's your state of stress. And now we want the points on the Mohr circle. I call this point x and this point y. You can call it whatever you want. But x is sigma x comma negative tau xy. This is how the book does it. And sigma y is equal to, oh sorry, sigma y comma tau xy. These are points on the Mohr circle, right? So you just pull, you plug the values in. So x is equal to the point is negative 60 MPA comma um, negative 35 and y is um, sigma y, which is minus 40, comma 35. Okay, so these are your two points on the Mohr circle. And we also need the average. The average is the center of the circle. So sigma average, I'll call that point C, is equal to sigma x plus sigma y over 2. So that's just uh, minus 60, minus 40, well, it's plus a negative 40 over 2, which is, that's a negative 100 over 2, so that's minus 50 MPA. Okay, so with these points, we have three points, we could draw a circle. Okay, so let's draw the circle. Let me, let me erase this sigma axis, this is your tau axis, and they're both at MPA. This is MPA. <sighs> okay, so we need to know where these points lie. Okay, so uh, for your x coordinate, it's negative 60 comma negative 35. So I'm just going to call this negative 60. Uh, and uh, negative 35 is so. okay. Okay, so you have a point over here, and the center of the circle is minus 50, so I guess minus 50 is over here. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's minus 50, and then your, your other point is minus 40, comma 35. So here's 40, minus 40, and here's 35. Okay, so this is going to be here, and give that straight line, and then you have a circle. Alright, <laughs> okay, so uh, what you have to notice is the maximum shear stress occurs here, so this is tau max, right, so this is your maximum shear stress up here, right, but that's just the radius of the circle, so I'll call this R, so we're interested in finding R because they want the maximum shear stress and they want the principal stresses, well the principal stresses lie over here, they're on the extreme ends of the circle, so this is sigma 1, and this is sigma 2. Uh, okay, so we're looking for this, this, and, and this for part A. This is just tau max, okay? So um, how are we going to find this? We're going to have to use Pythagorean theorem, obviously. So we need to know this distance. I'll call this, oh, I called, what was this point? This was x, this was y, this was c. I'll call this a, and okay, that's good. All right, so we just need this right triangle over here. Okay, so what is CA? What is line CA? What is that? If this is 50 MPA and this is over here is 40 MPA, how do you get this distance over here? It just, what? Add 10. Huh? Add 10. 
And the distance should be 10. The distance is 10, yeah. Yeah, it's negative, it's 50, it's minus 50, minus negative 40, right? So it's, it's this minus this, okay? Which is equal to negative 10, MBA. Okay, and now what's, what's AY? That's 35. It's just 35, yeah. Okay, M E A. All right. So we have we have this side of the tri right triangle and this side. How are we going to get R? Pythagorean theory. So you have uh, R squared is equal to A Y squared plus uh, C A squared. So we want to solve for R. R is the square root of A Y squared plus C Y. Sorry, C A squared. Okay. All right, so just plug in the numbers. It's a square root of negative 10 squared plus 35 squared. So what is that? Um, tell you in a second. It's 36.4 MPA. Okay, so this is a maximum shear stress. So this is equal to tau max. Okay. So we found one thing in part A. We also want to find sigma 1 and sigma 2. These are the principal stresses. Okay, so how are we going to find that using Mohr's circle? Well, we know the radius and we know the center of the circle. So how can we find that? Alright, so we know using the circle that if we take, if we take this, uh, the average and add the radius, you're going to get sigma 1 and then if you subtract, if you use uh, the center of the circle and subtract uh, the radius, you're going to get sigma 2. Okay? <clears throat> okay. So you want sigma 1, comma 2. So that's just the average plus or minus the radius. Okay? So um, sigma 1 comma 2 is equal to the average, which was what? Uh, what is it? 50? Yeah. Okay, so it's minus 50 plus or minus r, which is uh, 36.4. So sigma 1 comma 2 is equal to, I'll just give you both the values. It's negative uh, 86.4 MPA. Um, uh, uh, 13.6 MPA. <clears throat> okay, so those are your principal stresses. Okay, and uh, I labeled sigma 1. Sigma 1 is obviously negative 13.6 MPA, and sigma 2 is equal to uh, negative 86.4 MPA. That's pretty simple, right? So that's part A, and then for part B, they want to know uh, the principal angle over here. And whenever you're using Mohr's circle, the angle is double. So it's this is two theta p, and the the shear the shear the principal shear uh, angle is in this direction. It's going counterclockwise, and then this is two theta s. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we're gonna have to find two theta p and two theta s. Is everyone good with this? Can I raise it? <laughs> okay. All right. So how are we gonna find two theta p, the principal uh, angle? So we know tangent two theta p is equal to opposite, which is a y, over um, c a. Okay, so we can find two theta p by taking the inverse tangent of a y over. I'll just plug in the numbers. A y was uh, thirty five, and uh, c a is negative ten, right? Just use the positive, uh, the positive number. You'll find the angle because if you put a negative, you're going to get the, you could get a wrong angle. So just keep everything positive because you know where the angle is coming from. Okay. So uh, two theta p is equal to 
is equal to uh, 37 degrees, and it's going counterclockwise. That's important, okay? Because, CCW. Huh? Is it counterclockwise or CCW? No, no, uh, sorry, it's clockwise, sorry. I, I said counterclockwise. It's going this way, clockwise. Sorry, I didn't mean to say it. I said counterclockwise, I meant clockwise. Yeah, it's going this way. Okay, all right. So, and then we want to find um, two theta s, but we're really interested in theta s. But we know from this, uh, from the Bohr circle, that theta p plus theta s is equal to 45. Remember, because they're double angles, so it's equal to 45, right? And likewise, 2 theta p plus 2 theta s is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so you could just solve for theta s. You do 45 minus uh, 37, so you get 8. 8 degrees, and this is going counterclockwise. <clears throat> Are they always opposite? Huh? No, they they're not always opposite, but it, de it depends where the line's drawn. Like, if the line's drawn like this, it's, it's, the, it's an angle where you have to bring this line onto the tau axis. So, this has to go like this, right? Right. And this has to go in this direction. Okay. That's why it's counterclockwise. All right, let me do the next problem. And I was telling your classmates before, this is probably what you're going to see for that problem that he, if you get it right, you're going to get an A in the class. It's going to be similar to this. Because <clears throat> this tests all the chapters. It's going to take a long time to scroll. If you could do this problem, you basically learned the whole class pretty well. You're definitely a master if you can do this problem. Okay. What this problem doesn't give you, they don't draw the axes, but I drew them in. This is y, this is x, so you guys know the directions, and this is the z direction. <clears throat> okay. Alright, so what are they asking in this problem? They want to know, uh, they give you this, they give you the inner diameter, okay, this is, this, this cross section looks like this. It's a tube. Okay. So they give you the uh, inner diameter. So I'll just call it di is equal to 450 millimeters, and they give you the thickness of the wall. Uh, this is a pressure vessel problem, by the way. Okay, so they give you the thickness of the wall, and it's six millimeters, and they give you the pressure inside. So they give you the pressure of the fluid, whether it's air or whatever it is. So um, that pressure is 1.2 mpj. Uh, Okay, so this is what they give you, and uh, they want you to determine uh, the maximum normal stress and the maximum in-plane shear stress at A, at this point over here, okay? All right, so we're obviously gonna have to draw a free body diagram at that point. Okay, so um, where do we start? First, what I would do is, we're obviously gonna have to draw a free body diagram at A, but we have to determine something first. What's the torque on this, uh, Cylindrical uh, pressure vessel. What's the torque on this thing? Five kilonewtons times five hundred millimeters. Yeah, exactly. Five hundred millimeters. Sorry for the squeaking. 
times 5 kilonewtons. Okay, so T is equal to 2,500 newton meters. Okay, what else can we get? There's also a moment. There's also a moment from this force, right? This distance times this force will cause a moment, right? You guys agree? So the moment uh, at which axis is it around? Z the axis. Z? No. The, the moment's around the Z axis, right? No. There's no, there's no moment around the Z axis. Yes. The torque, you just found the torque, right? right. The torque is the 500 millimeters times the 5 kilonewtons. Mm -hmm. But there's a moment too. From A to this point, there's, there's a force going down. So that's going to cause a moment around the x axis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So mx is equal to 750 millimeters multiplied by 5 kilonewtons. So mx is equal to 3,750 newton meters. Okay. All right. So you've got everything you need right now. And um, let's draw a free body diagram of A. Okay. Free body diagram A. Section A. Maybe I should draw it bigger. that section A. A is right here. Uh, right, so what do we have in this free body diagram? You guys just had a test on this. Like, uh, question two. With the I beam? Huh? They, what? The moment around. Yeah, you have a moment. Okay, so you have uh, M. And which, which way is it going? It's going this way. It's going counterclockwise. So it's going this way. This is mx, and this is equal to uh, 3,750 newton meters. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? We obviously have a torque. Okay. The torque's going this way. So we have a torque like this. So this is whoops. Sorry. But T is equal to 2,500 newton meters. And then we have one more thing. Shear. We have a shear force, yeah, right in the center, going straight down. So this is uh, this is usually called B, but whatever, we'll just call it five kilogram. Okay. All right. So the shear force, perfect. We have everything now, right? So you see how this is going to be a hard problem. <laughs> okay. So uh, they asked. Let me write down what they asked for, so you guys can look at it. Okay. So they say determine. Uh, max normal stress and uh, max in plane shear. Stress. Okay, so this is what we're after, right? So now we're going to have to find stresses. We found this uh, combination, we drew the free body diagram, and now we have to find the stresses, right? And remember, this is a pressure vessel, so this, is, this actually has a wall like this. Okay, I didn't draw it in, but it's okay. Um, that's a cross section. So uh, we're going to have to obviously, we're gonna have, obviously have to find uh, the bending stress, because we have a bending moment. So we have to find the bending stress. We might, do we have to find the transverse shear? Do we? If we're looking at, at this section A, okay, this is a free body diagram, and we want to know uh, if there's any transverse shear in this. Do you guys know? No. There is none. Yeah, transverse shear is zero in this case, right? If A was over here, then there would be a maximum transverse shear, okay? But it's at this tip, so. There's no transverse shear. So VQ over IT is zero, right? So these are the things you have to think about. Okay, what do I have? VQ over IT is zero, but there's a, there's, a, there's a torque on this thing. So you have TR over J, 
So you have tau xy is tr over j, right? So this is when chapters 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever come in. Okay, so we know the torque. What's the radius? Okay, let me label this picture. Let me draw another picture. Uh, okay, so we know this, right? So I'll draw the cross section again over here. I'll call this Ri, and this is Ro, okay? So the inner radius and the outer radius. So uh, we know the inner diameter, so if you want the inner radius, you just half this. It's 450 divided by 2. So the inner radius is equal to 225 millimeters, right? And the outer radius is just the inner radius plus the wall thickness. So that's equal to uh, what? 231. 231 millimeters. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, so we know the outer radius and the inner radius. So this is equal to TR sub zero, right? We want the maximum over pi over two times R naught to the fourth minus RI to the fourth, right? So this is our expression for tau xy. And then you can just substitute in for it. We know the outer radius is uh, 225, you can substitute, do, you, do I have to substitute it in? Or I can just give you the value, okay? So this is equal to 225, but you have to change it into um, meters, so it's 0.225 meters, plug it in for here, and this is equal to, sorry, I gave you the wrong number. That's the inner radius. So it's 0.231 meters, is 0.231 meters, and this is equal to, 225.225. Okay. All right. So once you plug those in, where do I have that? Okay. So the value you get for that, and remember, this is a torque. So the torque is equal to uh, 2500. Okay. So once you plug all those values in, you get 1.3 MPa. Okay, so that's tau xy, right? And we just discussed before the transverse shear of VQ over IT is zero, okay? So if you had a VQ over IT, you'd have to add it into this one, right? Oh, this is tau xy. So if you did have a transverse shear, it would be this number plus the number you got from the, uh, the transverse shear. You guys follow? Okay. Um, Okay, so we got we got that, and now there's also a, there's a bending stress. Okay, so what's a bending stress? Oh, I shouldn't have raised that picture. Oh no, it's fine. That we have that free body diagram. So um, I'll call it sigma a because that's where it's maximum. The bending stress is maximum over here. Okay, so that's equal to mxy over i, right? That's the moment of inertia. So now you, you have to find uh, the polar moment of inertia, you have to find the moment of inertia, you have to find so many things in this, so it's a good problem. Okay, so sigma a is equal to mxy, in this case is what? It's just r, r sub zero over i. Okay, so i is equal to pi over four, times r sub zero to the fourth minus r, sorry, r sub i to the fourth. <clears throat> so i is equal to pi over four, just plug and show, put the numbers in. This is 0 0.3, uh, two, sorry, 231 to the fourth. And this is minus 0.225 to the fourth. So I, the total moment of inertia you get is 2.235 times 10 to the fourth, negative fourth, meters to the fourth. Okay, all right. So you have I, we know R sub zero is just uh, 231. So you could plug and chuck, you get MX was, uh, let me just give you the values. It was 
3,750 newton meters multiplied by um, 0 0.231 meters, all divided by the total moment of inertia, which is 2.235 times 10 to the fourth, negative fourth meters to the fourth. So you get 3.88 MPa. <laughs> okay, so you're still not done. Uh, so you have the stress due to bending, you have uh, tau xy, and now there's, remember, this is a pressure vessel, so there's fluid inside creating pressure along this wall. So you have a hoop stress and a longitudinal stress. You guys learned this, right? You guys learned hoop stress and long with pressure vessels. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so you gotta find the, those stresses too. So, uh, I don't even know where to do it. Can I erase this now? You guys got it? Okay. Just remember those numbers. Okay. So, we have sigma L and sigma H. Okay. So, sigma H is equal to PR over T. Right? I don't want to give you the wrong formula. Yeah. Okay, and sigma L is one half times sigma H, or it's equal to uh, P R over two T. Okay, and what I would do is derive these so you know which R I'm talking about. Because when you derive this, the R they use is the inner radius. So you have to use the inner radius, which makes sense because the fluid's only acting over here, right? You're not going to use the outer radius because there's no fluid over here, you know? So the flu all the fluid is in here, so you use the inner radius, Ri, okay? Uh, but derive it. I would, if I had more time, I would derive it for you. I'll derive it next class, okay? Um, all right, so you have to find these values, right? So the longitudinal stress is in this direction. Right? It's, it's a messy picture, but it's, it's coming out of the board, like all around, like out. Do you guys follow? Mm -hmm. Okay, and the hoop stress is if you cut this section, it's going up, okay? So, well, in this case, it's going outwards in the x direction, because we want to know this section. So if we cut it like this, Okay, so it's going out like this. I'm trying the best to draw. So this is A over here. <clears throat> so the hoop stress is in the x direction. Okay. And there's also okay, you guys get the point. This is this is sigma H and sigma L is this. So that's if you cut it like that. Okay. Um, all right, so the hoop stress. So they give you the pressure. The pressure is 1.2, right? So it's 1.2 MPa, right? And R is the inner radius. So the inner radius is uh, 2 to 5 millimeters over the thickness of the wall, which they give you is 6 millimeters. Okay, the wall thickness is 6 millimeters. Right, so you can get the hoop stress. <coughs> The hoop stress is 35 MPa. And now we want the longitudinal stress. Well, we know it's just half this value. So sigma L is equal to half this, which is 22.5 MPa. <clears throat> OK, so this is where it gets tricky. This is where you have to combine stresses. Because you have, you have a few stresses in uh, the z direction, you have two actually, and then you have one stress in the x direction, and then you have the tau x y, right? So what, what stresses do you have in the z direction? The longitudinal stress is obviously one of them, because the stresses are all coming out this way, like, you guys see that? Okay, so sigma L is in the z direction, what else is in the z direction? The bending stress, yeah, see, you know. Okay, that's good. So sigma z, we need to use all this information to calculate it, right? We can draw more circle again. Okay. All right. So 
let's draw a Morse circle. Actually, it's going to be, let me, let me give you the coordinates first. Before we draw a circle. Okay, so we have x, which is uh, it's normally sigma x comma negative tau xy. And then we have y, which is now in our case uh, sigma z comma tau xy. Okay? So, and the center of the circle C is sigma average, which is equal to uh, sigma x plus sigma z over 2. Okay? So this is the average. So we could find this out, we could find these out. Okay, so this is sigma x is equal to 45 comma tau xy was what? I erase it, 1.3, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's 45 comma negative 1.3, and this is equal to, uh, what was it? Uh, sigma z was 26.4 comma 1.3, okay? All right, so, and the average, let's get the average. Sigma x is 45 plus 26.4 over two, and that's equal to 35.7 MPA, okay? Uh, so we have the average. Now we can draw the Morse circle. I'll just draw it here. This is sigma. This is tau. Uh, okay, so these are your points, right? Um, they're both positive, so the circle is going to be on this side. So the the do you have to restart it? Or it didn't yeah. go okay. Um, so the center of the circle is this value. So let's label that in the middle. So this is uh, 35.7. This is an MPA. This is an MPA. Uh, okay, so that's the center of the circle. Uh, we have 45 comma negative uh, 1.3. So I'll call this negative 1.3. And this is 45 over here. 45. Uh, so it's a point right over here. And then I'm going to make it easy over here. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a pictorial, like, it doesn't have to be a scale. Um, okay, so the stress here I'm going to call is 26.4, so that's also, tau is 1.3, so points over here, this is the center of the circle, so draw a straight line. So this is C, this is uh, Y, and this is X, this point over here. Okay, so draw the circle, draw the circle, Oops. okay, so that's your Morse circle, and now you can do the same thing which we, do, we just did before in the other problem. We could find uh, this distance, um, okay, so 45 is over here, okay, so you can find, I'll call this again, A, yeah, whatever, I'll just call it A, okay. So we, could, we have to find CA, we have to find AX, this is R, right? They want the maximum uh, in-plane shear stress, so that's R, that's what we're looking for. Um, and we can find sigma 1. They want the maximum normal stress, so that's equal to sigma 1. The max is here, the min is over here. You guys agree? Okay. So we want to find this and, and the radius, okay? So once you find those, you're done. That's, it. that's the whole problem. But that's a hard problem if you don't know what you're doing. You'll never be able to solve this. So uh, You can just use the equations for... Yeah, part. you can use the equations. You could, if you want to memorize it, R is the square root of sigma x minus sigma y. But in this case, it's uh, sigma x minus sigma z. Yeah. You know? yeah, you can memorize it if you want. Well, it's on the equation sheet. So. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, so you don't have to memorize it. But... Uh, yeah, do whatever you want. We just have to like look at all the equations on the equation sheet and be like, which one applies to this question. Yeah, you and can And there's do like that. six of them. Yeah, you can do that if you want. Uh, I don't like to memorize. I can't memorize anything, so I'm really bad at that. I have bad memories. Okay, so let's get CA. I can't even remember the numbers I wrote like two seconds ago. <laughs> okay, CA. Let's get this line CA. So CA is uh, it's, it's 45, right? 
this distance is 45 from here to here is 45 subtracted by this distance which is just sigma average so 45 minus 30 uh, 35.7 so you guys give me that number because I didn't calculate it I just used the equations I was bored. I was uh, I was lazy. Yeah. What is that? 9.3. 9.3. Okay, 9.3 MPa, and uh, what about Ax? Which is AX 1.3. Is, is minus, yeah, exactly. Ax is equal to minus 1.3 MPa. <laughs> so we want R, so we know R, if R squared is equal to this, well, R squared is equal to Ca squared plus Ax squared. So r is equal to the square root of cx, ca squared plus ax squared. So I'll just plug in the numbers. Um, it's equal to 9.3 squared plus negative 1.3 squared. So that should give you 9.4, right? <coughs> 9.4 is 0. 9.4, whatever. OK, so this is equal to tau max, right? Because if you just move this radius and move it to here, tau max is over here. So tau max is the radius. Tau max is the radius, okay. So this is tau max, okay. So we found the maximum uh, in plane shear stress. But now they ask for the maximum normal stress, which is sigma one. I labeled sigma one on this more circuit. So we have to find sigma one. How are we going to find sigma one? It's really quick and then we're done. 35.7 plus 9.4. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, 30, the, the average, 35.7 plus the radius. This plus the radius will give you this point. Right. Sigma 1 is equal to sigma average plus the radius. So sigma 1, the maximum normal stress, sigma max, is equal to um, 35.7 plus 9.4. So sigma max is equal to 45.1. You could do this, you'll get an A in the course, for sure. <laughs> okay, that's it.